Hello, here's another quadcopter I made recently and the idea with this one is that it's supposed to go really fast just in a straight line so as fast as it can uh, horizontal not up or down or anything and just to try and record the fastest possible speed. Um, it's not really performing as well as I would have liked it to at this point but I thought I'd make a video to show where it is at the moment and I'll probably have to make another video to show uh, how it improved, let's hope. Um, so the design as you can see is based roughly the same as one of those other ones that I made a few months ago, just a couple of cross beams in the middle. Um, so I'll show you some photos of the build and stuff but the um, motivation or the inspiration for doing this was a couple of things. One was that a little while ago I made this uh, GPS speed speedometer and it was showing the um, the current speed on the screen and I also made a variation of this where it would record the highest um, recorded speed during each run and just show that on the screen um, and while I was doing that I gave it a little test just with this um, old Dytone FPV 250 nylon frame that was what I was flying at the time and I was quite surprised that it managed to get up to 128 kilometers an hour um, just with the stuff that I had on it, like I wasn't specifically building this for speed um, so that was just a, a 4S battery and 2204 motors and 5 inch bullnose props so I thought well that's actually not too bad I wonder how fast I could get something if I really tried a little bit harder so um, that was one, one inspiration and I guess another fairly large inspiration is this guy here RoboForce RX2000 um, he is obviously doing something very similar here, he's calling these videos Mini Quad Speed Record. So this is a series of videos that he's making and let me just play that so you can see. Um, and he's sort of put out a challenge to try and make the fastest 250 sized quadcopter you can. So I thought I might have a go. He's got up to 163 kilometers an hour I think at the moment. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I think it was 163. Anyway. Um, so if yeah, if you're interested in the stuff that I do on my channel, building these quadcopters and stuff, you really should take a look at this guy's channel because he builds a lot of cool stuff, and he puts you can see he's putting a bit bit more effort into it than me as well, um, and getting getting really good results. So anyway, uh, that was the other sort of motivation that sort of made me think about doing this. Um, anyway, you can see uh, it's sort of built around the run cam. That's just the, uh, what do you call it, the mounting thing for the Runcam 2 camera. And I'll just show you the photos that I took at some point. Um, so it's just a, a four aluminium bars with some holes in them. And they're joined to the carbon fiber tubes with some aluminium clamps. And to hold the camera mount on, I took um, one of these Oops, wrong window. Where's my windows? Oh yeah. So these plastic or nylon, whatever they are, motor mounts, I used one of those to be the base of the camera mount. So I just had to cut the walls off it and then uh, placed it on there like that. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it right in the middle, but that turned out to be a good thing because I needed to put, a, put it a little bit over to the side, as you can see here, the screws had to be over the side anyway because there's sort of a big gap in the middle of the um, the run cam mount. What do, you, what do you call this thing? Slot? Slider? Case? I don't know. Whatever it is. So it was okay to be over on the side like that anyway. Um, and then the bars and everything fit together like that. Uh, let's just put a little piece of plywood on the front to hold the receiver and the flight controller. Unfortunately the Receiver is kind of large, would be nice if it wasn't so big, but it still fits on there. Um, yeah, it might be nice to have a different one actually, but this one works really well, so I really like these receivers. Um, so that's the one I've gone with for this, and because I have so many of them. I just used a little 5 volt step down um, regulator for powering stuff. Uh, so the ESCs I'm using are RC Timer. BL Heli 30 amp ESC, so you can see a couple of them there. These are the ones that I bought in an online auction with a big pile of stuff a while ago. And unfortunately one of them 
the first time I used them, one of them failed within about five minutes. So that's why I'm using three of those and one of these other ESCs, which is, this is a Hobbywing Platinum Pro 30 amp ESC. These are really good. I really like those ones. Um, but I'm just using one of those and that, I think the misbalancing of these ESCs may be something to do with the problems that we'll see um, a little bit later on as to why I'm not getting very good speed out of this. Um, so then I just put a couple of other strips of aluminium angle on the bottom to place the battery. And that's what it looked like when it was built. And it's just on 400 grams or so. Uh, the run cam is about 50 grams, so it's roughly 450 grams without a battery um, ready to fly. Or, well, it's not ready to fly without a battery, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, so it's not, not really a whole lot else to look at, I guess. Um, the flight controller is a Nase 32 Afro Mini, or whatever they're called, the little half-size board. Um, it actually has a barometer on there, which is interesting. <laughs> not sure if many people um, using these tiny little boards would be interested in purposes for a bar that would need a barometer, but anyway. Uh, these these clamps are really good. I love these ones. I got these from Hobby King, and I got the carbon booms from Hobby King as well. And these I got I actually got these from Banggood, and they're not selling them at Banggood anymore. There's a if you try and go to the page, there's a like page not found. But I noticed that Hobby King sells these now, and these are these are awesome. I'm going to get some more of those. They just make things so easy to build. Like if you're using these uh, 12 millimeter pipes or tubes. They just slip straight on there. They're really solid and tight, and they've got nice little, um, sort of like a little uh, channel for your motor wires to go into there. Yep, it's all all really nice and tidy, and they don't add a lot of um, air resistance. So you can see that the they're only just a tiny little bit bigger than the motors, and yet they do provide a little bit of protection from a hit from the side. Uh, I have some wooden dowel in here too. Um, so these carbon booms I actually took from one of my other creations from a few months ago that has now been recycled into this one. Um, what else am I... Oh, so the motors are RC Timer 2206-2000kV. And I wanted some bit more beefier motors than I normally use because I'm going to be turning 6-inch props and I'm going to be turning them really fast, let's hope. Uh, so what else do we have over there? Um, yeah, this is just a 200 milliwatt video transmitter. Um, oh, so I'm using the video from the run cam. Um, maybe see there's a little mini USB plug here that's just sort of waiting for the run cam to slide in and plug into it. Um, so I'm recording video and using this as the FPV camera as well, which uh, it works fine, but I find that on an overcast day, uh, it's not that great, especially when you're facing into the sun. Um, it tends to get a bit dark, so I wouldn't use this full time as my FPV camera, but I wanted to try and keep the weight reasonable and for just going in a straight line as fast as you can, um, it's 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 perfectly good enough. Um, right, so what else is there to look at in there? Not too much. Uh, so the the props that I decided to use with this are the regular Gemfan 6045, what you might call the normal props. I guess they're not bullnose or anything, and they are the carbon reinforced ones. So they're quite quite stiff. Not as stiff as carbon fiber, but they're nice and stiff. And these so far have given me the best performance of all the props I've tried. I haven't really tried a whole lot of others. Uh, I've tried these ones. These are 55, 50 bullnose. So they do catch quite a bit of air. There you go, 55, 50 bullnose. I think these are fairly new. I haven't seen them until recently. But I thought I would try the larger pitch size just to um, try and get some more speed out of it. Um, 
but they didn't really give a whole lot more better performance than the ordinary 6045s. In fact, I think they may even be a little bit slower. But it's hard to tell because, as I'll show you in a minute, the problems with the ESCs I'm having may be limiting factor anyway. I also tried these ones. These are 50-50, three blade, five inch props, and they were not really that good. Um, the, the two bladed six inch ones were way better. But I thought I'd give them a shot anyway because they had a fairly high pitch on them. So that's a five inch pitch as well. Just so I thought that might be fast, but it wasn't really, wasn't really that great. Um, the batteries I've tried are 1400 milliamp hour three cell, just to do some testing and get used to flying with it because it was actually the first time I've flied with that much flown with that much camera angle. It's about 40 degrees. So I just wanted to get used to it with batteries that weren't too uh, aggressive. Um, I also tried, this is 4-cell um, 1400, um, but I actually bought a battery specifically for this quad to try and go as fast as I could, and that's this one here. A um, bit higher capacity, and it's a 65C discharge 4-cell. Um, Unfortunately, this turned out to be a dud. As soon as, it, as soon as I did one run with it, I noticed that one, one cell was, um, wasn't holding charge and it wasn't outputting and I only got about two and a half minutes flight time before the battery alarm started beeping. So it's gonna be another five weeks before I can get a replacement of this battery to actually really give it the run that I wanted to. Anyway, um, I've done quite a bit of talking so far. So Let's have a look at a little bit of the video that I got with the just with these two batteries, I think, to start with. And we'll see that the the biggest problem I'm having is that it flies quite nicely up until about 60-70% throttle. And then when I push the throttle past about 70% or so, it starts going like this, quite, quite uncontrollably. Um, so let's just have a look at one example of that. Oh, actually, first, let's just have a look at some line of sight footage that I took on the maiden flight. Well, the first, the first proper outdoor flight that I tried it with, and this is with the 6045 props. On uh, I think this first clip here was actually just three cell. And then I think this clip here where I go a little bit further away and then hit full throttle, that was probably four cell. And I'm flying in angle mode and the maximum angle that you can put by default with clean flight is 50 degrees, I think. And you can see that I'm not getting enough angle to keep the quad going level. It's, it's just going so fast, it's still going upwards. Okay, now here's some FPV footage from one of the first flights that I did. This is using a three cell battery and it feels to me like it's going about around about 100 kilometers an hour. And the nice thing about that is that it's only, it was about 60, somewhere between 60 and 70% throttle um, on three cell to get what feels like about 100 kilometers an hour. I haven't, I haven't actually put the, um, the speed logging thing on this yet. It's um, I'm going to have to make it a little bit smaller before I can fit it on there. Um, but I thought it was quite promising that you could get this kind of speed from a 3-cell that wasn't even at full throttle. Now in this pass, when I push the throttle past about 70%, it starts to waver up and down quite a bit. After I'd tried that a few times, I finally worked up the courage to try full throttle. And I noticed that if I took it to full throttle and just held it there for a moment, 
it would actually manage to stabilize itself. So while it, while I held it at full throttle, it wasn't a problem, but it didn't really get much faster. And then as I let it, let the throttle off, so it came back past the 70-80% throttle region, it wobbled again before it stabilized back when it got back to about 50%, 50-60% 50, throttle. So it's just sort of that region in the middle where it was um, pitching up and down. So as far as the reasons for why it did that, my first theory, theory was of course uh, must be something to do with aerodynamics because it's not exactly very smooth and sleek and it presents a bit of a bit of a chunky profile there. Although I would have thought that if it was going to um, pitch one way or the other, it would pitch upwards first. I don't know, it just sort of seems to me that this area here would catch the air a little bit more it's away from the center of mass and it would give more uh, torque or turning moment. But uh, it actually seemed to pitch downwards first every time. So I couldn't really figure that out. Um, but after a while, my uh, theory has changed a little bit now because I noticed a video quite coincidentally the next couple of days after this. I saw a video by Adam Wilkinson where he was showing or he was demonstrating um, I'll put a link to this video in the description but he's he's showing how the top speed of the motor is actually limited by the ESC's and I had of course heard about that but I just sort of didn't really think about it very much while I was doing my um, testing and so right now I'm thinking that it could perhaps be a problem two problems maybe these cheaper ESC's are not able to go as fast as this one can. Uh, this this has the 48 megahertz MCU in it. Not really sure which these which MCU these ESCs are using. So um, what I'm going to do is change all of these other ESCs so that I'm using all of the same type of ESCs, which is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt, but um, has to be done for testing. Um, and what's interesting though is that this one ESC is actually powering one of the side motors. It would have made more sense to me if this ESC was powering either the front or the back motor because that would sort of contribute to an, an unbalance in the pitch direction, wouldn't it? But that odd one out ESC is actually powering the right hand side ESC. So. I don't know, it's all a little bit strange, but the next step is to try changing the um, ESCs to be all the same and see what I get from that. I might also try these props because I have these on order, they're in the mail at the moment, and they are 6 inch and 55 or 5.5 inch pitch, um, which is the same pitch as one of the, the bullnose props here. But they seem to be made a little bit more for forward speed because they are for RC airplane apparently. Although it's a little bit strange that they have counterclockwise props as well. But um, anyway, when these arrive I'll give them a shot too. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll have something a little bit more interesting to um, show in the way of speed results in my next episode of this series. Anyway, thanks for watching.